manic and the only thing that makes me better when I'm abused or hurt or, you know, discarded and all the things he's done to me for the last 25 years was him at at least acknowledging me. Right. Mm -hmm. So now he wants to see me, even though my bones are broken. Never again. I can't believe I did this to you. You name it. And, and, And this is a man that literally gets on his knees every night, reads the Bible and prays. Confusing to me how someone could do that everything was confusing i couldn't feel straight i i was a a shell of who i used to be i let him come back in the house water protection and all i did not want to i knew i didn't want to you know drop the charges i filed for divorce um I was ready. I was like, I cannot live like this again. My, my 10 year old, he's now almost 12, almost yeah, 12. He was nine at the time. My, my nine year old grandson saw me with the black eye mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I rem- and other family members and my, my two sons couldn't mm-hmm. even look at me, couldn't even look at me. Um, and now I understand like how painful it was for mm-hmm. everyone in my family to see me suffer pretend it was okay i eventually Mm -hmm. dropped the charges because three months goes by for covid everything was closed down and finally it was just like whatever i i just couldn't take it anymore just make it better the whole world was upside down i just wanted the kids to be happy the holidays were rolling around and he was okay for a little bit he he was he was on his best behavior. Oh, hi, baby. This you know all these all these nice little terms and still being nice to me and bringing me tea and toast in the morning and it didn't last long. Um, eventually, he started getting nasty again, getting distant again. Started talking nasty to me in front of my, our grandchildren. Um, I have two sons from a previous marriage that he raised. So one of my sons has five children and the children were start mm-hmm. starting to witness this. Um, so eventually he convinced me to drop the charges. He convinced me to drop the divorce filing and we went on like normal and it was okay for a little bit. Then I realized nothing's changed he's not he hasn't changed things just got worse and worse and worse he would disappear 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 and i knew something was bad um at this point he was starting to ignore the grandchildren and i'm like i'm in trouble um one day i came home i was out and i found him um with a woman and when i confronted him he body slammed me i was able to record i mean recording when you say record things it's so imperative they kept me in the back of the rv they wouldn't let me leave um it i don't even know he already had his things packed he, the weeks before he was bringing home like the plastic bins and oh i'll keep my clothes outside so you have more room inside they had um been having an affair not only that, he had, she and he, I don't know who did it, had a um, live feed tape recorder on me for five weeks straight in that RV on her phone, watching me, m- watching my every move, listening to my phone conversations with the Women's Center because I had started the Women's Center. They had gotten in touch with me. I was doing groups three times a week. I still do the groups, just not as often. I found a psychiatrist. I would have to hide, go in my car and drive to Dunkin' Donuts Mm -hmm. to have Zoom sessions with my psychiatrist and with the women's group. And I had tried therapy years before over the years and um, never helped me. I could never find the right fit. Uh, They would just want me to take medicine and Mm That's a whole other episode. So this man is from New York City, and he has a house up here in Connecticut, not far away. So he could understand me a little better and relate to me. And he's been doing this for a long time. So I was hiding hiding my therapy and hiding my groups. They had a tape recorder in my car. The day I caught them, all his stuff was ready. They put it all in his pickup truck. She was just 
harassing me and screaming at me and keeping me in the back of the RV. The shame, the embarrassment, the humiliation. First of all, here I go again. Second of all, I can't do this to this woman's place. She's kind enough to let me stay there, like gave us a long-term rental at last minute's notice after I sold my home. So they they leave after a whole big, you know, the screen. They 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 pushed every button trying to trigger me. It was the first time in my whole life, but in the last 25 years with this man that I literally shut up. I didn't try to, I didn't defend myself. I didn't say a word. I was in such shock. It was my breaking point. It was, wow, this is my life. This is insanity. So they leave. I go to the bed. I called my, my, I called a couple family members. I told them what happened. They're like, no way. So the way I always dealt with this cycle of abuse with this person for all these years is I would just isolate, isolate, go lay in that RV wanting to die. Bad. It was bad. It was really bad. I can't even get into it all right now, but this went, this was in September. It was actually a year ago. I believe it was September 6th that I caught him. The last time I was body slammed, the last time he physically abused me. It took me, it took me this entire year. I just moved into this little apartment in June. It took me this entire year of therapy, of family. I finally asked for help. I finally told my family, people, family members, friends that from my past, from 40 years ago, my, my, that, and they would express to me, we always waiting. Oh, it's a lot.